Hello students, the other day we have discussed about uh, basics of electrostatics that is uh, we have discussed about uh, charging by contact and also we have given sign convention for the charges that is sign convention that is uh, uh, charge acquired by the glass rod is given a positive charge and also charge acquired by the uh, silk is nothing but negative charge and uh, also a charge acquired by the plastic rod is nothing but negative these are all nothing but sign convention they have given those sign convention because when plastic rod and glass rods are uh, being uh, uh, bring together they attract each other that means they are having opposite signs so <clears throat> and also we discussed about conductors insulators conductors are nothing but the materials which allow the electricity through them why they allow the electricity through them because conductors have many large number of free electrons those free electrons free electrons means those electrons will not be bounded towards to the nucleus tightly so those loose electrons uh, will be available free for the conduction of charges okay and insulators are nothing but the materials which are, do not allow the electricity through them are nothing but insulators so we are now going to discuss about the basic properties of electric charge basic property basic properties of electric charge like in mechanics we have some physical quantities like vectors and scalars vectors are nothing but which have magnitude and direction as well scalars and scalars are nothing but which have only magnitude in the similar fashion uh, charges also having some property that is first property is nothing but additive property additive property of the charge additive property of the charge so additive property is nothing but uh, property uh, that is see here if we, there are large number of charges like this q1 q2 q3 and so on qn these charges will be added as like as like ordinary numbers arbitrary numbers so the net charge is nothing but q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 plus qn and etc and you need to take care that in the process of addition, the net charge is nothing but this much. In the process of addition, you need to take care of the sign of the charge. Like, uh, the sign of the charge. Like, uh, for example, I can explain this with the help of example. That is, if charge Q1 is having 2 coulombs, and Q2 is having 3 coulombs, and Q3 is having minus uh, uh, 4 coulombs, and let Q4 is having 6 coulombs and Q5 is having 7 coulombs of charge like this. So the net charge is nothing but we can add the charges as like arbitrary numbers. So now I am adding them with the proper taking care of sign also. 2C plus 3C plus half minus 4 coulombs plus 6 coulombs plus 7 coulombs. So the net charge is 2 plus 3, 5 minus 4 is nothing but 1. 1 plus 6, 7, 7 plus 7, 14 coulombs. So we can add the charges as like arbitrary numbers, as like scalars in the mechanics. Okay. And next property is nothing but charge is conserved. Conservation of charge. Charge is conserved. Charge is conserved. What is the meaning of conservation? Conservation is nothing but we cannot create anything or we cannot destroy anything. But we can uh, change one form to another form. In a similar fashion, charge is quantized means, conserved, charge is conserved means, see here, uh, when we rub the glass rod on the woolen cloth, when we rub it on the woolen cloth, like let us consider this is woolen cloth this is nothing but glass rod so glass rod loses some electrons and wooden cloth gains the same number of electrons that means initially the glass rod is neutral woolen is also neutral 
Now we create it. We should take this glass rod and wool as the system. System is initially having neutral charge. System is initially having neutral charge. After charging by contact, after rubbing the glass rod on the wool like this, the glass rod is losing electrons. Glass rod is losing electrons. And the same number of electrons will be gained by the wool. So that means we are not creating the charges from outside the system. The charges, charge, charge loser by the glass rod will be equal to charge gained by the wool. Okay, this is the conservation of charge. We are not creating separately from outside the system. We are not destroying separately from the system to outside. We are converting, we are getting the charges inside the within the side of the system. The neutral will become equal number of charge positive and equal number of negative. When we club together, equal number of positive and equal number of negatives when club together, total charge will become zero again. Okay, this is nothing but charges uh, quantization, charge quantization principle. Or, sorry, charge conserved principle. That is, in definition, we cannot we cannot we cannot create the charge or destroy the charge destroy the charge right in nature in nature in nature by rubbing by rubbing one on another by rubbing we can create from neutral charge from neutral charge we can create equal number of positive charges and equal number of negative charges positive charges as well as we get negative charges we also get negative charges the number of positive must be equal to number of negative charges on clubbing them again we will get zero charge or neutral charge okay this is all about charge conservation now the final property is nothing but charge is conserved not charge is conserved charge is quantized quantization of charge that means charge exists see here let q is the charge charge n is the number of charges number of charges and e is the uh, basic charge basic charge quantity fundamental charge quantity which is equal to charge of the proton magnitude of e is equal to charge of the proton or charge of the electron okay basic quantity so then now i can give charge q is equal to n times of basic charge e that means charge can be equal to integral multiple of fundamental charge okay any charge of any body is equal to integral multiple of fundamental charge that is nothing but if fundamental charge is e e is nothing but fundamental charge or basic qu charge quantity or fundamental charge quantity fundamental charge quantity okay if we take uh, anything lithium is kuna one quantity in the case of lithium, atomic number for lithium is nothing but 3. So, in the case of lithium, there exists how many protons? Protons charge is equal to 3 into E. How many electrons will be there in the case of lithium atom? Electrons. The number of electrons and number of protons must be equal. And number of electrons equal to 3 into. Charge of the electron is nothing but minus E. Charge of the electron is negative, so I am writing it as minus E. So minus 3E. So total charge of the lithium atom. For lithium atom, the total charge is equal to 3E plus half minus 3E. Total charge is nothing but 0. As we have discussed already in the last class, charge of any atom is equal to 0. And we can say that any atom or any molecule is a neutral entity. So this is nothing but charge is quantized. That means charge Q is equal to. There exist. I am I am going to explain in detail now. 
q is equal to integer multiple of integral multiple of e integral multiple of fundamental charge quantity e q is equal to n e where n takes minus infinity to uh, 0 to plus infinity it can take positive values and it can also take negative values why it can take positive values because uh, positive charges exist and negative charges also can exist that means if q is equal to, if I, n equal to 4 then q is equal to 4 into e okay 4 into e quantization means integral multiple of fundamental charge only exist and then q equal to 4.1 e exist either or no because 4.1 is not a integer okay and also q is equal to 4.6 e exist either or no does not exist q is equal to 6.5 or 6.2 e exist either or no like persons like persons persons also do not exist as 6.5 persons 7.5 men or 8.5 girls 8.2 girls does not exist persons also exist in the manner of integer multiple of a number okay similarly in similar fashion charge also exists in the integer multiple of fundamental charge e where the value of fundamental charge e is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs coulombs is nothing but it is a unit unit of charge unit of charge coulomb is nothing but unit of charge one coulomb is nothing but unit of charge okay so this is not, nothing but charge of the electron or charge of the proton magnitude of charge of electron or charge of the proton which is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs okay so i'm going to explain one problem here if charge of the material is equal to 5 coulombs if uh, charge of the material charge of material is 5 coulombs then then how many charges how many charges do exist do exist in that material in that material right he has given a charge q value q is equal to 5 coulombs and he is asked to find out number of charges in that element in that uh, sorry material number of charges we need to find so now we know that as per the charge quantization q is equal to n into e q is equal to n into e so he has given q q is equal to 5 coulombs equal to n into we know the fundamental quantity charge of fundamental quantity is nothing but 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs here coulombs and coulombs sorry coulombs and coulombs get cancelled so n is equal to n is equal to 5 divided by 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 charges by calculating this with the help of a calculator you will get the number of charges exist in the material is this clear this is all about charge quantization there are three properties for the charge one is additive property we can add the charges conclusion is we can add the charges as like as like arbitrary numbers but we need to take care of the sign of the charges while we are adding now next one is nothing but charge uh, conservation charge conservation means in nature we cannot able to create the charge we cannot able to destroy the charge but we can able to create the positive and negative charges by in any method by rubbing or by induction method or any method okay but uh, number of charges positive charges will be equal to number of negative charges after creating if we club them if we bring together they will merge together they will sum up together and gives zero result that means neutral charge again and also charge quantization charge quantization is nothing but the charge of any material 
is equal to integral multiple of fundamental charge E. Here, fundam value of fundamental charge is given by 1.603 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Coulomb is the unit of charge. And also, I explained one example in order to get a clear idea on the number of charges. Okay? Now, I'm going to discuss, I'm going to explain about Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law. Before going to explain about Coulomb's law, we should know that if the size of the charges are negligible as compared to separation between the charges. Like, I am taking two charges, charge 1, its charge is nothing but Q1 and uh, second charge is nothing but Q2. The separation between Q1 and Q2 is large as compared to size of the charges. If the size of the charge is less as compared to separation between them, we can treat these charges as point charges. We can treat them as point charges. Now I am considering the center to center distance between Q1 and Q2. This center to center distance, let us consider it is R. Center to center distance is R. And so, the force exerted by one charge on the other charge. Force exerted by one on two R. Force exerted by two on one. Force exerted by two on one. Both are equal as per the Newton's third law of motion. These two are equal but opposite in manner. Equal but opposite in manner. Okay, I explain clear about this in later section of class. Now, if two charges are kept by some separation or one charge will exert force on the other, the other charge also will exert equal and opposite force of the first one. So, the net force is directly proportional to force due to charges is directly proportional to the product of two charges magnitude of product of two charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them okay by removing proportionality symbol we will get some constant k into q1 q2 by r square Keep in mind, Q1 may be positive or negative, Q2 may be positive or negative, but we should take the magnitude of product of Q1 and Q2. I am telling you about only magnitude of the force. Okay, right. So, where K is nothing but constant and its value is given by K value is equal to 9 into 10 to the power of 9. Unit centimeter equal to K K. R square is equal to K is equal to F into R square F into R square by Q1 Q2 Don't buy hat the units Okay, like this So now you can write the units for K Newton, meter square Newton R square is nothing but distance square Newton, meter square per Q1 unit A D Coulomb Charge, another charge unit is Coulomb. Coulomb into Coulomb is nothing but Coulomb square. These are the units for K value. 9 into 10 to the power of 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Actually, K is nothing but 1, pi, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 by 4 pi epsilon. 4 is constant. Pi is constant. Epsilon naught is also constant. Epsilon naught is nothing but Permittivity of free space. What is this? Permittivity of free space. Its value is given by 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 12. What are the units again? The reciprocal of K. Epsilon naught is this. K mouth denominator. 
So reciprocal of k units are nothing but epsilon units. Epsilon naught units. That is nothing but c square coulomb square by newton per meter square. So this is the value of epsilon naught. Permittivity of free space. Epsilon naught is nothing but. Okay. So now <coughs> this is the Coulomb's law. So force, magnitude of force F equal to K Q1 Q2 by R square. We can find out the direction now. See here, let us consider this is charge Q1, this is charge Q2, charge Q2, force exerted by Q1 on Q2. Force exerted by Q1 on Q2. Your force is acting on Q2. Okay. Let us consider both are positive charges. Both are positive charges. Now, force exerted by Q2 on Q1. If Q2 is Q1, it repels the So, this direction is Force exerted by 2 on 1. If the force is acting on 1, here the force is acting on 2. Okay. These two forces are action reaction pay. Those two should be equal and opposite. Force exerted by 1 on 2 is equal to force exerted by 2 on 1. Magnitude of force exerted by 1 on 2 is equal to 2 on 1. Directions are exactly opposite. Okay. But the magnitudes are equal. Suppose I am going to explain one more. Let us consider Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative. Because we should find out the direction of force also. Right? Q1 is positive, Q2 is negative. So, see here, these two are unlike charges. As we have explained already in the previous lecture, there exists an attraction force between unlike charges. So, positive charge will attract the negative charge. So, force exerted by Q1 on Q2. As I don't know, this force will be along the line which joins the two charges. Force will be uh, along the line along the line which joins which joins two charges two charges join this line direction on a force direction on them. right so force exerted by q1 on q2 a force is a attractive force is a line go towards q1 on them. this is nothing but force exerted by one on force exerted by 1 on 2 and 2 also exert equal and opposite force on Q1 so force exerted by Q2 on Q1 this is negative this is positive so attractive force again so force exerted by Q2 on Q1 force exerted by 2 on 1 will be like this attractive forces will be like this is this clear this is the direction of force and magnitude of force is nothing but k q1 q2 by r square and direction will be along the line which joins two charges okay next i am giving you one more f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square q1 q2 by r square if i am going to give you one problem if q1 is becoming of I am splitting charge into half and if Q2 becomes one fourth of Q2 dash Q1 dash Q2 become one fourth and if the separation between them is lesser lesser if separation between them is lesser that is nothing but R by 2 then find then find new force what is the new force between new charges so new force same with man f dash is equal to uh, q1 is nothing but q by 2 k q1 q2 by r square we know the formula is we know the formula for force f nu is equal to k one charge is nothing but q1 dash and kona inko charge and q2 dash another charge is nothing but q2 dash and separation between them is r dash q1 dash is nothing but q by 2 q2 dash is nothing but we consider it as q2 by 4 q2 by 4 q1 by 4 r dash is nothing but i gave it as r by 2 
then find the new force. New force is equal to K Q1 dash into Q2 dash by R dash whole square. Now, new force is equal to K Q1 is equal to Q1 by 2 Q1 dash equal to Q1 by 2 Q2 by 4 divided by uh, R by 2 whole square R by 2 whole square Clear? Now, mm, new force is equal to right, K Q1 Q2 by 8 Q1 Q2 by 8 divided by R square by 4 R square by 4 that is nothing but K Q1 Q2 by R square into this 4 will come to numerator reciprocal of this one is nothing but 4 by R square R square I have written already right K Q1 Q2 by 8 into R square by 4 reciprocal of this one is nothing but 4 by R square so now now this 4 1 ja 4 4 2 ja 8 now new force is equal to how much new force is equal to k q1 q2 by r square k q1 q2 by r square into 1 by 2 that is new force is equal to old force k q1 q2 by r square is nothing but original force f f into 1 by 2 half of the new force is equal to half of the previous force okay likewise you can solve the problems right and once again the coulomb force is directly proportional to product of charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them while you are solving from magnitude of for solving for magnitude of force you need to take positive value of q1 and positive value of q2 though he has given negative values isn't it right because we are finding out only magnitudes so magnitude of product between two charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between two charges right so this is the end of uh, this class i will give you i will explain you some problems on these topics in the next session Like I will conclude in two minutes. Wait a minute. I will conclude in two minutes. Like uh, there are multiple charges in the case of multiple charges. In the case of multiple charges. Right? I am taking three charges like this. Three charges like this. Okay. Positive. This is also positive. This is also positive consider them as like this q1 q2 and q3 if the distance between q1 and q2 is nothing but r1 and distance between q1 and q3 is nothing but r3 and distance between q2 and q3 is nothing but let it consider it as r2 q1 q2 mother distance r1 q2 q3 mother distance r2 q1 q3 mother distance ne r3 ankonami Find, uh, example, find net force, net force on Q3 charge, Q3 charge by Q1 and Q2. Q1 and Q2. Q1, Q2, wala, Q3 me the net force and no find out. Yeah, this is the question. And then, yeah, if two charges are there, there exists a force between, Coulombic force between two charges. And see on Q3. So force exerted by Q2 on Q3. Isn't it positive charge? This is also positive charge. So they will repel each other. Isn't it right? Repel I tell you what. This will be the direction. Direction of force at round the The direction of force will be along the direction which joins two charges. This is nothing but force exerted by one on three. Clear? Force exerted by one on three. So, force exerted by 1 on 3 is equal to K into Q, sorry, this is force exerted by Q2 on Q3, 2 on 3. 
टू वन थ्री इज इक्वल टू फोर सिक्स एट टू क्यू टू वन क्यू थ्री इक्वल टू के इन टू प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू चार्जेस क्यू टू एंड क्यू थ्री क्यू टू क्यू थ्री डिवाइडेड बाई सपरेशन बिटवीन दीज टू चार्जेस इज नथिंग बट आर टू स्क्वे आर टू स्क्वे क्लियर नाउ Q1 is also exerting some force on Q3. Q3 is a force exertion. So force exerted by one on Q3. We ask you to find out net force on Q3 by Q1 and Q2. Right, one and three. So <coughs> this is K product of two charges Q1 and Q3. Q1 Q3 by uh, square of the distance between two charges is nothing but R3 square. Now this is the force this force will be along this direction this force will be along this direction along the line which joins the two charges repulsive force is what it was now this is nothing but force exerted by one on three see here forces are vectors and they are not pointing in y dire one direction so we should take the vector addition of force exerted by one on three and force exerted by two on three वेक्टर एडिशन एट्ल ना मरी वेक्टर एडिशन एट्ल आलवेज वी शुड टेक द ऐंगि फ्रम पॉजिट एक्सएक्स पॉजिट एक्सएक्स लैट दिस् ऐंगि बी टीटा वन दिस् ऐंगि बी टीटा वन ऐंगि आफ फोर्स एक्सटेड बै टू आई फ्रम पॉजिट एक्सएक्स इन कौंटर क्लाक वैज डे फ्रम पॉजिट एक्सएक्स इन कौंटर क्लाक वैज डे दिस् ऐंगि इज नथिंग बट components. This force can be resolved into components, x component and y component, and also you can resolve force into components, x component and y component. So F one x is nothing but F one cos theta, clear? And F one y is nothing but F one sine theta, theta one, theta one. F one ki theta one an kono na wale. Right. Similarly, force F two also can be resolved into components, x component and y component. F two is equal to F two cos theta. इकड़ा theta है ना theta two cos theta two, and F two y is nothing but F two uh, sine theta two. Right. Now, if you add x components, you will get resultant force R x. If you add y component, you will get resultant force R y. Now the resultant force, resultant force, resultant force equal to R x into I cap. R x is along x axis. Got it? X axis is a unit vector in I cap, and R y into J cap. Now you can find out the magnitude of resultant force is equal to R x square plus R y square. You learnt this in previous year. And uh, direction theta is equal to this is nothing but magnitude and direction theta is equal to resultant force direction theta is equal to tan inverse of y component by x component like this you need to solve the problems if there are multiple charges what should you do you need to find out if the distance is given charges is given. You need to identify in which direction the force is acting. Angle also will be given for these problems. Okay, always you need to measure the angle from positive x-axis, and for this force, measure the angle from positive x-axis in counterclockwise direction. So this force can be resolved into two components. This force also can be resolved into their respective components. F two result can be resolved into x component and y component. F one also can be resolved into x component and y component. We can add x components because they will be pointing along the same x direction. By adding two x component of forces, you will get resultant force along x axis. 
by adding two y component of forces you will get resultant force along y axis so final resultant force is equal to resultant force along x axis x axis lo unit vector i kaabatti i cap r x into i cap this r x indicates magnitude along x axis i cap indicates direction is pointing along x direction r y is nothing but component of net force along y direction j indicates direction along y angle so magnitude of this force equal to under root of r x square plus r y square direction you know tan theta equal to opposite side by adjacent side that is theta equal to tan inverse of r y by r x Okay, this is the end of the class students. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.